I was speechless when I heard that buried bodies were exhumed, moved to makeshift shoddy graves to make space for the newly deceased. Burr Oak Cemetery is the scene of something beyond horror movie proportions. Relocating and dumping the dead and selling the plots for profit? The office manager was at the center of this operation. Workers arranged to take cash and then give deeds for a plot to dismember and degrade and get paid. Stay with us as Monica Vernett Gray joins us to discuss man's inhumanity to man, a creepy caper tonight on Gerard McClendon Live. Welcome to Gerard McClendon Live. Carolyn Towns, Keith Nix, Terrence Nix, and Maurice Daly, all charged today with dismembering of a human body, a Class X felony. 200 to 300 bodies were dug up and dumped in an isolated area in weedy, weedy area in the back of the Burr Oak Cemetery, according to the Chicago Tribune. Joining us now, Morticia's Funeral Services and a representative of the Illinois Funeral Directors Association, Ms. Monica Vernett Gray. Monica, welcome to the show. Thank you. We appreciate you. You know, it doesn't get any more sensitive or insensitive than this. Funeral and burial services must be at the highest of professional quality so that families can grieve with comfort and with dignity. First, take us through, before we get to cemeteries, take us through the funeral directing process from the morgue. I know it's going to be a little morbid here for most viewers, but the morgue, the embalming method, the funeral and the burial. Take us through the process. Okay, after the family uh, exper uh, experiences of the loss of a loved one, they will call the funeral home. And the only time the person will be at the morgue is if there is an autopsy involved in a case of maybe a homicide or a suicide, or actually they have a very long list of things that they do autopsies for. But okay, the family will make the first call, the initial call to the funeral home, and then they'll schedule a time to come in, and they'll sit down, and they'll have to provide vital statistic information uh, social security number, parents' names, um, if it's a veteran, a discharge, a DD-214 Department of Defense uh, discharge for veterans benefits and things like that. So they have a conversation with the funeral director and they will select merchandise if they're going to have a traditional service with burial or they could, you know, they have options of burial, mm -hmm. cremation, maybe even donation to science. Okay. So, okay. you know, they discuss those options as well. And, um, and payment, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes they'll pay cash or with credit or insurance. A lot of times people, they don't have insurance or they think they have insurance and then they'll find out at the funeral home, unfortunately, uh, the policy has been surrendered or there's a loan or there's a this. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna interrupt you right there because let's talk about payment and the actual funeral direction. Now, what you mentioned products earlier. Are, okay. are the, are the, is the plot uh, the cemetery, the transportation to the cemetery, are these a part of those services and, and products as well? Uh, on the funeral contract, the transportation from the uh, funeral home or the church to the cemetery would be a funeral charge. Mm -hmm. However, the burial plot and uh, oftentimes the burial, uh, outer burial container is a cemetery charge. Now there are funeral homes, you know, who will sell a vault or an outer burial container to a family, but more oftentimes than not, I think the cemetery tries to um, make the money on, on that item. Okay, okay. Monica, I need you to look right into that camera. Hey, okay. check it out. I need you to answer this question. Should people, you know, this is a, this is a horrible situation that it's has taken horrific. place, Monica, and this is by no means a scar on the funeral profession, which is your profession, but right. this could be a deep scar on people who are responsible for cemeteries. Should people get additional insurance for the um, for their family members plot now? I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, they should get enough insurance to cover burial expenses as well as expenses beyond the burial for maybe paying off bills, paying off a mortgage, paying off a child's educational expenses, you know, things like that, like, you know, get term policies or whole life policies. There are a lot of options out there, you know, but I would recommend, you know, taking the opportunity to go to the funeral home of your choice, you know, and establish a relationship or rapport with him or her 
and go ahead and try to make your prearrangements because it's a lot easier on the family yeah. you know, when that day comes. I guess because of the death denial culture, you know, people don't yeah. want to admit I'm going to die. So yeah. people try to put it off, you know, like, but it's going to happen. And it's not so, a good, and it's not a good thing to put off. I mean, you really right. should take care of this while you're alive so that it's your family members don't have to deal with it. That you would know. be my recommendation, yes. A absolutely. You know, Monica, let's look at something else. We're going to shift gears slightly. Okay. And, and you, people are going to say, oh, Gerard is so insensitive. But when it comes to being buried in a cemetery, let's face it, it's, re it's real estate, Monica. And yes. there, are certain, there are certain dollar figures that it takes to be buried in certain cemeteries, especially when space is an issue. Now, let's talk about real estate. And be honest with me, Monica, should there not be a set price to be buried in all cemeteries? Why does it vary from cemetery to cemetery? I am not going to go there with you on that one. I will say <laughs> that they have the right to charge, you know, what they feel they need to charge to stay in business because there is overhead, you know, so they will charge you for the vault or the outer burial container and you're going to pay for the land, yeah. you know, maybe even get a deed for it. And then there's open and closing charges as well, you know, because the laborers must be paid, you yeah. know, to to provide that service to families. So there is some cost involved, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's up to the individual cemeteries, you know, to decide what they need to charge, you know, to pay their expenses and overhead. Now, now funeral directors, mortuary scientists have to have certain degrees, certain training, okay. certain certification, yes. and, and it's very, very strict, but is it as strict on cemetery owners? <laughs> Again, um, I'm going to say that they're maybe not as heavily regulated as funeral directors are. Um, I'm personally, my license comes from the Illinois Department of Professional uh, Regulation. Okay. And professional and financial regulation. Okay. You know, I can lose my license. You know, I can be disciplined. It could be revolt. You know, there is a lot of uh, regulation there. I'm suspecting, it's just my personal opinion, that we're probably going to see a lot more stricter rules and more regulations yeah. in the future. Maybe not necessarily on the funeral side, but definitely on the cemetery side. Well, hold tight, Monica, because as you know, speaking to a funeral director and a mortician, I trust you. I also trust A.R. Leak. I trust Smith Bazell Warner. I've got a few others here. I trust Hinton Williams, okay. you know, but when it comes to, that's on the funeral direction side, but when it comes to these cemeteries, I am very skeptical now, hold tight, Monica. Okay. Stay with us as we discuss the Burr Oak Cemetery nightmare. Family members are in distress as four people are charged with dismembering bodies, dumping and collecting cash for reselling the plots. 630-575-TALK. Gerard McLennan Live returns with Illinois Cemetery and Funeral Director Association member Monica Burnett Gray. Hey, GML will be back in two minutes.